Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It is another Monday and we are back again with you. This is today's woman COP USA Radio. And, you know, we are going to have a great time. This is the season where we are acknowledging mothers. It's a season that we are, you know, wanting to honor all the mothers of the world. And when we say mothers, we know that it's not only biological inclinations that make you a mother. You could be a mother because you are naturally a nurturer. So this season is dedicated to all mothers. And here in the USA, we are still, you know, in a solemn mode, even as, you know, over the weekend, um, Pastor, uh, Pastor Matthew Poku was you know, late to rest. And we are still, you know, with the family and, you know, with our national head and the entire clergy of the USA, uh, we are still, you know, showing our support and love to the bereaved family. And today I just had the opportunity of listening to a dirge that was composed, you know, for Reverend Matthew Poku. And I thought that was very beautiful. Even looking at the topic we are about to treat, we are talking about conception and how this particular individual conceived the notion to do such a beautiful thing in honor of the bereaved family. It's a beautiful thing. So God bless whoever it is. I, I didn't catch the name of that person, but it just spoke volumes to me that when there's an idea on your heart, you might as well go for it because the moment might be brief. And so even as we're about to talk about the subject of conception, we are saying that there are so many things that God lays on our heart in our sleep. And even as we walk about the day, the time is far short. And so whatever is laid on your heart, be quick to do it. So that is where we are leaning today. And so my Edith Poco and Joshua, we are still with you in prayer. As always, I have my mothers here with me. I have First Lady Henrietta Kusi, First Lady of Tennessee District, married to Reverend Benjamin Kusi, a mother of Jeremiah, Joshua, Jonathan, and Jana Nicole Kusi, works professionally in the accounting field and also in the kingdom. She is, you know, a youth and pencil product herself, a great love for women and children. First Lady Henrietta, it's always a blessing to have you. You're ever welcome again to today's woman. Thank you so much, Sof Mommy. I'm happy to be here with you all. God bless you. God bless you. Off to next door neighbor, Mama Debbie Engman in Canada. I always say, don't ask me the distance, but yes, she is. Uh, Mommy is the wife of Apostle Daniel Engman. He's the area head of North York area in Toronto, Canada. They are former missionaries to Guyana, you know, in South America. Mommy has a background as an early childhood educator from the Guilford, you know, uh, Guilford University College. She is, you know, doubles also as somebody very knowledgeable about about herbal stuff and also in the horticultural aspect as well. Mommy is a biological mother of three boys and she has a, a granddaughter as well. Moa is a mother of many in the kingdom. Mother being men, you are ever welcome to today's woman. Thank you very much. And I'm really blessed to be here today. God bless you, God bless you. And we are off to Ghana. We have our Mama, Mama Doris, Otunyako. Mama Doris and Mama Abigail are all in mourning. You know, is that the season? Mama Doris is mourning her mom and recently her uncle. And I think the funeral has been slated for the 24th. So Mama Doris and Mama Abigail, we are still, you know, holding you up in prayer. Mama Doris Otunyako is married to Apostle Lawrence Otunyako. And, you know, in the course of the week, Mama Doris celebrated her birthday. So Mama Doris, happy belated birthday to you and also Apostle Lawrence Otunyako is a, is a uh, he's in Accra and uh, VK Anand Temple. He's also the fact the financial administrative director of the church worldwide. They have six children, three young men, three young women. And also mommy here has a background as a lecturer. She has an MBA from the Kwame Kwame University of Science and Technology, a former lecturer of the Kumasi Technical University, three times the host of Women on Fire Conference. More doors, it's a blessing to have you again. You're welcome to today's woman. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And to our mommy dearest, we have Dr. Mrs. Abigail Che. Our mommy is the Department of Nursing and Midwifery. She's the head of that department of the Pentecost University. She's lectured there since 20. 
14. Also on the National Fair in Ghana, Amumi is the president of the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives. She's been married for over 37 years to Apostle Professor Peter Hineche. He is retired, a retired, you know, area head of the Church of Pentecost in Winneber, also a past rector of the Pentecost University. They are blessed with five children and four grandchildren. Mama Abigail, you're welcome. We love you. Thank you very much. And I'm always glad to be with all of you. God bless you. God bless you. And Elder Sam is here at the studio. We salute you. All our people, we salute you. Kindly share, invite a friend to invite a friend. We're about to, you know, honor all mothers. So all mothers, love to you. You do all, you do so much. And I want you to know that don't think of yourself as a mother only in the sense of having given birth because by being a nurturer, you are a mother. Today, we're about to talk about conception and Mama Abigail, I'm getting ready to come up to you. I love to start with you. But you know, as I was thinking about this topic, I like that it has both a symbolic and a literal dimension to it. And mommy, I was thinking about one aspect where you look at the, the virgin birth of Jesus and we say Mother Mary, you know, Saint Mary, however you want to call her, has, you know, the immaculate conception. And then I'm thinking of Jezebel, a mastermind, a woman who was able to bring a whole prophet to his running for his life a man who could take on the prophet of Baal but one woman spoke and this man was shaking like a leaf and so if I'm thinking about this conception topic that's who comes to my mind over the top of my head but Abigail conception 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 what do you think about when you hear that word um, thank you for this opportunity to delve into a very profound area. Um, conception starts with God. Mm. Mm. It's his idea. Mm. Because he conceived the idea that we should come into this world as human beings. And he birthed it by through creation. And the thing about conception with God is that he, when he conceives things, he, he doesn't look at just the beginning, mm. but he uh. thinks it through to the end. And that is why in creation, he created almost all the things that the human being will need before he brought the man and the woman at the last day. So conception is God's idea. And now he mm. has birthed it into us. And because we have been created in his image, we also have that gift of conception. Mm -hmm. Now, like you rightly said, we can look at it biologically through getting pregnant, delivering. We can also look at it um, figuratively how you can think about things and then let them come into being. Mm -hmm. so in both areas, it's still conception. But as to how you... You, you let it work depends on the source that you are looking to. So if we turn to God as our source of conception, then we want to go along the, the line that he has created for us. Mm -hmm. Last week we were talking about the, our purpose. So within that you conceive the things that need to be birthed to come out, for you to come out and uh, doing the purpose of God in your life. Mm. And when it comes to um, procreation, that one is also given by God. Mm. Anybody who has had a baby, it's creation by God. Mm. That is how you went through the nine months or seven months or how many months people go through to have the baby, a full baby. When we, we look into the science of it, it's so intricate and everything is done in such a way that we come out with perfect human beings. Some may, be, um, may have some handicaps or whatever, but so God creates people in such a way that by the time you deliver and you look at your baby, you realize that this is a masterpiece from God. Mm. Either way, whichever way you look at it, conception comes from God. But when it comes to the ideas, 
where as to whether you will let God birth it through you depends on you as an individual and how you go about it. God bless you, mommy. Perception from God. And, you know, as you were saying that, I was just looking at the Bible where you said it was God who birthed the idea and God said, let us make man in our own image. So he conceived it, he verbalized it. And I'm looking at the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. Then God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. And so the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So when we asked that you were just saying that, you know, my mind went to that scripture where the Bible said it was very good. And, and, and as much as we're students, when your teacher would grade something and say very good, it was something that made you very, very happy of your creation. God bless you so much for taking us to the origin. Mama Doris, conception, conception, conception. Mama Abigail says everything is from God when it comes to conception. If you want to weigh in as well, please. Okay, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I see conception as the continuation of let us make man in our own image. Hmm. After hmm. God had created the man and the woman, then he gave everything over to man to continue. And the continuation starts from when somebody is conceived in the womb. I also see it as a beginning of a journey and the formation of a new life. Mm -hmm. The life that God, the Zoe life that God gave us begins from conception. I also see it as one of the wonderful handiworks of God. It's so marvelous. You don't see you, how the, 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 the sperm meets and when, the, the woman even gets uh, pregnant. Sometimes you may get pregnant for months before you become aware that you are even pregnant. Mm -hmm. So it is solely from God. It is mm -hmm. God that gives and it is God that nurtures. It is God that keeps it and it is God that brings it out uh, um, in his own time. So I see it as one of the miracles that can ever happen to mankind. Mm. And, and we pray for every woman who is just expecting the fruit of the womb to go through this miracle, to see and experience the joy that you are continuing the creation, the, the very thing that God did and has given us the power, the opportunity to continue to do it. Conception is from God. It starts from God. He, he supervises it and he forms it. The, in, in the in due process, he will say that the heart should come and the heart will come. You go, then the doctor will say, yeah, I can feel the fetal heart. And then another time you go, he said, these are the hands. You know, that process, that gradual process, God goes on it one day at a time. Mm. It's just a miracle. Mm. So conception is God's own miracle that he gives to mankind for us to know that he holds everything. So when you come on this planet Earth, don't think that you are an accident. No, you are not. God planned and allowed you to go through the process. So once you are here, once he has allowed you to be here, he will take care of you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. So beautiful. A miracle. A miracle. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that fully well. God bless you so much. Mama Debbie, amen. Back to you as well. Mama Abigail started to say it's from God. Mama Doris added to it. She's saying it's a miracle. Please, when you think conception, 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 what also comes to your mind, Mama Debbie? Beauty. It's mm. a beautiful thing. Mm. Our Lord has done through man is amazing because we were created. And yet, when you look at what he said, you know, I bless the Lord for our mummies, what they said. And when you look at what he said in Genesis 1, from mm. verse 20, going from 26 to 28, you know, he said, be fruitful and multiply. Wow. Mm. Fill the earth. Mm. and subdue it this is what the lord has blessed us with that we will be fruitful and multiply and even in that fruitfulness is he who allows it in our fruitfulness in whether it is both literal or not it is he who allows it to be 
Yeah, I mean, you can you can develop an idea and the idea will fail. Mm. Same mm. way you can become, you know, uh, a pregnant or you are looking for an issue. And uh, as we can see in the Bible, there were some who were not able to until the Lord opened the womb. You know, so we can see that our father has a hand to make sure that things are orchestrated in a, in a very smooth, he is, when I, when I consider the way God does his things, I say, wow, a master planner, master architect who does all things to his own praise and glory and to our benefit. So that is how I see conception. It is to our benefit and it's a glorious thing. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. God bless you so much. I love the dimension that you brought. I mean, the book of Proverbs 21, 30. There is no wisdom, no understanding, no counsel that can prevail against the Lord. <laughs> and the, Isaiah 46, 10 says, I declare the end from the beginning and ancient times from what is still to come, I say, my purpose will stand and all my good pleasure I will accomplish. I love it, Mama Debbie, that you showed us that when it comes to that beauty and the conception of ideas, you can plot it, you can think it, but it's only God who allow it to materialize. God bless you so much. God bless you so much for adding on to it. It's from God. It's a miracle. The author, maybe you think it's you, but the one who will bring it to fulfillment is God. First Lady Henrietta, we are orchestrating and we are weaving a certain poetry. What do you want to add to that as well? I think my mothers have said it all. You know, when you talk about conception, it's, you know, you can view it from two different perspectives. One being from the aspect of um, a woman conceiving, a woman um, being granted such a beautiful um, miracle that is, you know, when you think about it, it's very mind blowing how it even comes to pass. Mm -hmm. And it being like we all said, the source being from God. Mm -hmm. And you also have, you know, conception being the process of, or, you know, the ability to form uh, an idea um, and being able to allow that idea to flourish and come to pass. Mm -hmm. And so, um, as we've all said, the source of both is from God. Um, we see that even ideas, you know, when something is dropped in your, in your, in your spirit, you may think, oh, something just dropped, but no, it's not something It's the spirit himself that has dropped something in your mind, dropped something in your heart, um, and uh, it, for it to, for you to, you know, work on it, for it to come to pass. So in all things you see that come, and when it comes to conception, God is in the middle of it all. God is the one who forms it all. And God is the one who allows it to come to pass to his glory. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. God allows it to come to pass. You know, I, I was thinking about, you know, what you said that I was thinking about the conversation between um, David and Nathan and a King David wanted to do something very beautiful according to human thoughts. And the prophet felt like, yeah, this is a good thing to do. And God said, no, 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 no. Too much blood. I don't sanction it. And God will choose somebody else. So that's what came to my mind when you said that. The idea can drop. It's from God. And we allow God and God will shape it. It's been beautiful so far, even looking at how we are looking at it. Mama Abigail, I'm just going to come to you. And we're going to look at the literal dimension of conception where we're looking at you know, fertilization, implantation, if you like the fetus, you know, the embryo, I, I heard Mama Doris whenever she was speaking. And we want to look at husbands, even as we're being liberal, we're going to look at in the context of uh, marital union between the husband and the wife, we know that the women are the incubators, that's how we're going to say, it, because they actually physically carry the pregnancy to term. And so even from your perspective, you know, as a professional, if you can look at what the role of the husband is in all of this, when it comes to the literal aspect of conception, Mama Abigail. Okay, um, a lot of people think that men are just sperm givers. And after they've given the sperm, <laughs> that is all. That, that, is, that is the end of the story, no. Mm. It takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. And when, I mean, in God's own wisdom, he could have asked, he could have said that, okay, the woman can conceive through 
any other means. Mm. But he, he brings it out in such a way that there is a union between the man and the woman. Mm. And if you read the Bible, I mean, the King James Version especially, anytime they are referring to the sexual act that leads to conception, it says, and the man knew his wife. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mommy, the prof, the prof has a notion about that new. <laughs> <laughs> it's prof online. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> see, so the man knew his wife, and that shows the intimacy and the union, the, the beautiful union that comes about. Mm. Because when you get to know somebody, mm. It's, it's, it's not just head knowledge. Mm. Mm. The, the knowing that is being referred to here, it's not just head knowledge, but really getting to know, understand, empathize, and be part of the person mm. that you are uniting with. Mm. So in the same way, when the, the fertilization takes place, because the man gives the sperm, the, it meets the ovum, the uh, fertilization takes place, and like Omar Kosia was saying, every day something happens, mm. something new happens. Mm. Eventually, a full bodied baby or embryo is developed, who goes into the fetus, and then you deliver and you have the baby, a beautiful baby in your hand. But throughout that process, you see, in the case of Mary, the, the angel said that the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. Mm. Mm. So that overshadowing has to continue mm. throughout the pregnancy. And that is the time that it is expected of the man to show love mm. to the woman. Mm. And no includes getting to understand mm. and empathize with the woman. Just um, a few days ago, my son was telling me that um, they have developed something that can give um, contractions for men. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Something has been developed. So you, you the man will put it on hmm. and then go through contractions and see how it is like. <laughs> and he was telling me the story about this woman who came in and said, okay, told the husband that's okay. Now you, put, you, are, you are putting it on and you are going to do some washing and then clean up the kitchen and things like that. And it's in breaks. It starts from a very low level up to 10, a scale up to 10. And mm. the man came in a macho man, he thought he would be able to do it very well. So he said, oh, I'll put it at eight. Uh -huh. so he said, <laughs> <laughs> he turned around and he said, can I come down to two? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, going through the pain of labor mm. and um, even be before labor, mm. in pregnancy, in the things we go through, the weird dreams you can have, mm. the, the way sometimes my, one of my daughters was saying that everybody is smelling funny to me, so I don't want to get close to anybody. Mm -hmm. and those sensations that we go through, it is up to the man to understand and show companionship. Mm. that we are carrying this baby together we are we are helping each other though the baby is not i don't have a womb to keep the baby in i understand what you are going through and i'm with you to support you <coughs> sorry and research is telling us that people who go through loving pregnancy mm. normally have easy delivery oh wow. yeah they normally have easy delivery and it is because the, the union is together. There is that oneness mm -hmm. between the two people who have conceived the baby. So my, my advice to gentlemen who are listening to us and to mothers who are raising sons, mm -hmm. please let us understand that the pregnancy is a physiological change that goes uh, the woman goes through. and mm -hmm every support, every understanding, every help to be able to go through successfully. So the men have a part to play in the conception. Mm. After the, 
the conception has taken place, as the woman goes through, don't sit there and say that uh, the pregnancy is yours, so you carry it and then leave everything on the woman. The love that brought the union together should continue throughout from conception to birth. I think that is the part I want to press on when it comes to the part of the men in the school business of conception. God bless you, mommy. God bless you, mommy. It's so beautiful to hear you talking about the sympathetic pregnancy. And I know that in some cultures, they, they, there was a terminology that was thrown out there, kuvad, or something you know, similar to that, where there were certain rituals for the men whose wives were pregnant. So God bless you so much for speaking. You know, I know that pregnant women will really appreciate just hearing you. Mama, Debbie, I'm just gonna come to you because when my mommy was talking, I could just see you in acknowledgement the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I'm very curious what you have to add to the conversation. Mama Abigail, God bless you. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, Mama Abigail really expounded it, you know, and um, like you said, with, with the pregnancy, the men are part of it. And, and, and strangely enough, there are some men. Mm. I heard of a man who, he started having the contractions before the wife did. <laughs> <laughs> then I said, oh, I'm feeling terrible, the pain. And then the woman would say, what's happening? Then a half an hour later, the woman started happening. I uh, started having the contractions. But it's all because like you said, they understand that they are a team. Mm. That is one of the things that they must understand, that they are a team in this union of having this baby. Mm. So because of that, it allows the man, you know, sometimes the baby will be lifting up the arm, the woman is feeling uncomfortable, the man will go there and rub the stomach, and they say, hey, baby, just take it slow. Mm. And you know, gradually the baby will move down. And then they found out that even in the womb, mm. the man, starts reading or singing or doing things in that early stage to the baby. There are some songs when the baby is, after the baby is born, if the man sang to the baby in the womb, when the baby is born, when the man sings that song, if the baby is crying, the baby will be quiet. So you find that God in his own way has worked it out that like we are saying, the men are not just the sperm donors, mm -hmm. they are full participants in this journey of having this wonderful conception and child that God has given us. And the earlier, we all understand that. And we join together to make sure that we are bringing a child, we are bringing a child into the world. Mm. The better it is for us all. So that together, as we start from that beginning, when the child comes, we can still continue to guide them. And they'll be the people God wants them to be. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you so much. I'm going to come to you, Mama De uh, Doris, as well, but I want to acknowledge our people. And you know, when you were saying the song, the, the, the song, God's Love, is so wonderful. God, I would play it around Miracle when she was a baby, but wherever I was listening to, they, uh, uh, they would say Infobels. That's where I was getting it from. And the minute you say the word, she remembers it. She would just smile. And her grandma would sing for her, Miracle dear own peso, the Oswa woman. And she still remembers it. We don't think, but the minute you say that, then you can sense that she recognizes that. So, mommy, God bless you for bringing it to our attention that all these things are not wasted. They really count for something. God bless you so much. You are with us on today's so on COP USA Radio. You know, we want to appreciate all who are with us today and, you know, call a friend, invite a friend to invite a friend. And, you know, let, if you have any questions, let it be put on there. Our mothers are here. They will answer it. If you have any experience, kindly share. And so we have Auntie uh, Nana Pujis of Moshi. She's always with us here. Thank you so much. And she said um, something that I wanted to um, read for a minute. And she says what? Oh, happy Mother's Day to you all in advance. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, the COVID-19 is here. You know, God bless you. He says, happy Monday to our wonderful mothers. God bless you so much. And if you are in the Riley area, he has that laundry. So you can go, Elder, you can go ahead and post the address even on there and we can announce it to the people. And Auntie Francis Campo for it here, she says, happy belated birthday, Mama Kusia Tema Papa B. May God continue to read to me. 
bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you too. And she said, happy Mother's Day to you all in advance. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you too. Auntie Louise Jackson Henry, she says, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It's great to see you here. Auntie Rejoice Salam is here. God bless you for being here. And also we have um, Auntie Sandra Wilson. She says, hello, wonderful woman of God. Hello to you too. This is Sandra Kumin Bruce Mills. It's here. She says, happy Mother's Day, woman of God. Same to you. Thank you. Thank you. Auntie Julie and Pohima Jabba is here. She says, watching from Spainters. Praise God, women of God. We appreciate you for being here. Uncle Joshua, uh, he's here. He says, wonderful topic today. Conception is still a mystery. He says, the exact time of conception is still unknown. Conception is the miracle of life. How every organ is formed from an egg. And as sperm, it shows the infinite wisdom of God. God bless you all, mothers, for the wonderful role you play in this. We love you all. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate you. Auntie Gracie from Vaughan, because she's from Dan Simone of Crack. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. First Lady Dinah, I'm with here. God bless you, woman of God. And I see also Auntie Helen Brony. God bless you, Auntie Helen, for always being here with us. And my dearest husband is here as well. He said, thank you, First Lady. If God had made it such that a woman will carry the babies for nine months and the men would go through the contractions and delivery, it would have been very interesting, <laughs> of course. Now that we know there's a contraction machine, trust us, we will get it for you so you can experience it. <laughs> what we go through, God bless you all. Momodorus, we are looking at the literal aspect and the role of the husband. Our mommies have said, you know, very interesting things, if you can weigh in as well, please. Okay, so we all agree that yes, our men, they have a duty to play because they've deposited something vital uh, into us, something that comes from them, that something precious, something that they cherish, mm. something that they will not trade for anything. Mm. And they deposited that thing in us. So once you've given it to us, you don't need to leave us. Mm. We should, once we've started it, we should go through it till the end. So when we look at um, uh, husbands, they, they, so they produce what it takes to get pregnant as women. So it is the husband, we admit it. Even God gave it to Mary. And as Mama Abigail said, Immediately he gave it to Mary. He never left Mary. He allowed the Holy Spirit to represent him there as a man 24 seven with mm. Mary. Mm. So the men should be with us 24 seven anytime we get into that situation in God's wisdom. And they say that, and Mary, Ma, yeah, yeah, today, although we've given it to them, if they are, today, they are like God. Yes, they are like God. If you are like God, do what God did. Mm and be with us 24 seven mm. with the Holy Spirit always with Mary. When Mary is in pain, the Holy Spirit was there. <laughs> then another, another thing that I want to talk about is my, my the, the, the man in the Bible I love so much and that is Joseph. Mm. And you read Joseph, when you read Matthew 1, 20, Matthew 1, 21, the father is supposed to give the baby a name. Mm. The, the angel came and uh, Joseph wanted to leave Mary. He said, no, don't do that. Go and take Mary and give the baby a name. So fathers, make sure that you pray and give us godly names. Mm. Godly names. The fathers has that mandate to do it. Just don't name your children because some, you, uh, somebody named the child that way. You should prayerfully name the baby. Then another thing that I said, the husband is supposed to be the caretaker of the conceived wife. Mm. As in Matthew 1, 24, then the, the angel said, told Joseph, take Mary. And the Bible said that, and Joseph took Mary home. Mm. So husbands, don't leave us. <laughs> take us when you, when you take somebody in. You make sure you feed the person. You make sure you clothe the person. You seek for the medical attention, the well-being of both the mother and the father. All yeah. these things are done by the, uh, the father. So fathers are there to be, are there to help us go through the nine months. Mm -hmm. And they add prayer, you know, 
pray for your children. Once the baby is in the womb, they, they are very responsive. When you pray, you can determine the destiny of your children whilst they are still in the womb. Mm. If you can sing for them to answer, then we can pray for them to answer too. So don't wait till the baby is out. The very day that you realize that your wife is pregnant, fathers take up their responsibility and pray for them. Then the last thing that I want to say is that Joseph never left Mary when she was in labor. Mm. In that table, the Bible says that Joseph was there. Mm. There are some men when their women get into labor, they vanish. <laughs> <laughs> One man of God said that the first day that he experienced the wife giving birth, after the wife gave me, asked the doctor, doctor, I don't want my wife to go through this thing again, please. You see? No, but when you are there, you are supporting the woman, you are, even if you are not in the labor ward and he knows that, she knows that my husband is around praying for me or he's there, it will, it will help us do better than you know, the husband being a runaway husband and hide behind something and say that, hey, medium is slow. What are you afraid of? If you are, we are not afraid to deposit the sperm, you shouldn't be afraid to be there when the baby is coming. <laughs> we should stand by a woman psychologically when she knows that the husband is there, I think she will do better. Let's learn from Joseph how he even didn't uh, impregnate Mary but he took full responsibility of the pregnancy, took care of Mary. And when Jesus came, he gave birth and nurtured Jesus to be the savior that we are all proud of. And I pray that all men will be good men and help us through, cater for our children, bring them up to be people that the society will be proud of. Thank you. God bless you so much. God bless you so much, Marie. I was just thinking about what you said. If you can deposit, you might as well take responsibility. <laughs> Bless you so much. Uh, first lady Henrietta, Genesis 25, 21, the Amplified said, Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was unable to conceive children. And the Lord granted his prayer and Rebecca, his wife, conceived twins. Our mommy was saying that the husbands or the men have the responsibility of prayer and I was just thinking about this scripture and I was also thinking about another man Elkanah you know I was thinking about Isaac I was thinking about Elkanah in the Bible President Henrietta what do you have to add to what Amamis has said so far yes it's very important for um, husbands to realize that you definitely hold an important role um, from the time a child is conceived up into its upbringing and forth going. Um, a lot of times uh, men leave the burden to the wives as if they had conceived the child themselves. Hmm. But it is you who has, you know, God has used you as a vessel to bring such forth a gift. Hmm. And we can take those gifts for granted. And mm -hmm. so even in the womb, the husband has a very important role to bond with the child. As a mother, when you are, we, when you've conceived the child, you begin to have, you know, certain emotions that you yourself um, are not able to explain. And you have such a deep love for the child, even though you haven't seen the child. Mm -hmm. And um, it's important for husbands to also be able to experience such deep emotion and deep love um, for the child, even before the child comes to, to comes out. And like our mother said, when it comes to Joseph, Joseph was not the one who impregnated Mary, but mm -hmm. yet still um, he took upon the role as the father. And it wasn't a, a stepfather or a distant father, but he cared for Jesus just as much as his mother did. And mm -hmm. we see that when, you know, when Jesus was lost and he went to the temple, you know, Mary said, your father and I anxiously were looking for you. So that means the same anxiety and the same fear that as a mother she had for her son who she had carried and delivered is the same fear and anxiety Joseph had for Jesus even though he did not give the, the sperm so he wasn't it goes to show that fathers are not just sperm donors mm -hmm. but you are given an opportunity to be able to have an impact on the life of a child and it starts mm -hmm. with exception you know mm -hmm. a lot of times husbands take the role as far as when the woman is getting big they they're standing next to them and they're getting big as well so some husbands say oh my my wife gained 25 pounds and i gained 15 pounds it's not only with the eating <laughs> but yeah. being present praying mm -hmm. in prayer and prayer and prayer 
laying mm -hmm. your hands on the 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 stomach of the your wife and praying for that child praying mm -hmm. for your wife it it's very very important and it's very vital because a lot of things that we do as the child is in the womb like mm -hmm. you're saying so for mommy they begin when they come out it becomes a part of them we used to always play music i used to put headphones on my stomach for my first child my first born mm -hmm. And when he came out, he just loved singing. Even to this day, he just mm -hmm. loves to sing. Mm -hmm. He loves music. And um, I remember on his birthday, when he turned two, when he was waking up, he was singing. He was singing. He was just singing on his birthday because he just wanted to sing just to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So even while the child is in the womb, we have so much of a role to play. Mm -hmm. And so we shouldn't leave that role only for the mother, but fathers should step up and also take upon the mantle that has been given to them and allow what they have in them to be deposited in their children as well. Amen, amen, I love it. Fathers should step up. I see some comments, I'm gonna go look at it. And then mommy, uh, we are gonna start looking at the figurative aspect and balance it. Uh, this, this very profound account in the book of Genesis 30, you know, Jacob and, and what he did. And I just want us to, delve deeper into it just look at that uh scripture in genesis chapter 30 from 37 downwards i want to acknowledge our people and then we'll come to that thank you so much you are with us today to one cop us radio we are talking about conception 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 not only liberal but figurative as well it's a season where we are honoring mothers so i have with me um, Elder Kobe Jones, he has expressed uh, laundry. Uh, the address is uh, 3136 Calvary Drive. And it's very interesting. Calvary uh, Suite 109, Raleigh, North Carolina, 27604. If you're ever in the Raleigh area, support one of us. I see also Auntie Grace Ajiman, and she's also here. And oh, God bless you so much. She's always here with me. And it's a great pleasure to be out of this in New York. I appreciate you always, every single Monday, you are here. God bless you so much. And also, big sis, Mrs. Manito Bukmanje is always here with us also. She says, happy, lovely Mother's Day in advance, lovely mothers. God bless you and greetings to mom and everybody else. And my dear husband says, Calvary Fire. The address alone implies our clothes we wash there become charged with grace and mercy. By the way, please, what's the name of your laundry mark? He was going to put it on there. And my husband says, more Doris, I was with Presley. Yes, I was supporting. He was there. And yes, I made sure I held his hands very well. <laughs> when, when he always got sick. He should add that to the whole thing. <laughs> and the prof was right there with him as well. So. <laughs> and Auntie Nana Christina, who was a graduate of who well done reverend. <laughs> and Auntie Stella, she said, God bless you, Mama Doris. It's a humble submission to the man. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And my husband says, trust me, afterwards, I changed my mind about the number of babies I wanted. Initially, I wanted, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is it, why is you see all that and they give you the scissors to cut the cord, nobody would tell you to change your mind. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think Julie, I hear my job, she said, hmm, Mama Dory, some of our African men just give the seed and get lost. Not talking of being in the labor ward with the mother. God bless all mothers. Amen, amen. Auntie Lucinda Ajima, she says, pregnancy is a beautiful journey and it's wonderful to experience it together as the couple. Absolutely. Auntie Margaret Daniel, she says, praise God, my wonderful mummies. God bless you all for the good work you're doing. Amen. God bless you too. And uh, my dear, as I said, please, today we have repented. We'll do better. Amen. Amen. He's responding to something. And Auntie is Joy Stellum. She said, it's so sad that some men turn to hate or abandon their wives at the labor world once they notice it's not the, agenda, the gender they were looking for. That's very mm -hmm. sad. We asked for grace. Calvary was the confirmation code from God. That's all the copy done for you, all right? And yeah, she said she's talking about gender. God bless you. We are on the subject of conception. This is today's one. Oh, I'm, go. I'm about to go to the book of Genesis. And it's very interesting to me about that particular 
thing uh, that the Bible re records so that it will be, uh, you know, something that we can learn from. So the Bible says that Jacob, he took branches of fresh or, and almond and plain trees and peeled white strips of them, exposing the whites in the branches. 38, and then he set the branches which he had peeled in front of the flocks in the one drop where the flocks came to drink and they made it and conceived when they came to drink. So the flocks made it and could see by the branches and the flock gave birth to straight speckled and spotted offspring. Verse 40 says, Jacob, and I'm looking at it from the New Living Translation, Jacob separated the land and as he had done with the peeled branches, he made the flocks fade towards the street and all the dark or black in the new flock of the lake. And he put his own herds apart by themselves. So the long and short of it is the Bible says that Jacob would place the branches in the sight of the flock. And what the Bible says in verse 43, so Jacob became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks of sheep and goats and female and male servants and camels and donkeys. I'm looking at this scripture, mommy, in the figurative and the literal sense. I do know as a child that there were some notions and I thought it was more to do with specific ethnic groups where you are cautioned if you're a pregnant woman to be very careful or what comments you make about other babies, what you see and what your thoughts are. And I just assumed it had to do with the culture I belong to until I read this in the Bible. So Mama Abigail, I'm curious to see what your thoughts are from what the scripture is narrating when it comes to the idea of conception. Okay, thank you. Um, a lot of people hold different views about the site, the, what you focus on, what you concentrate on, and how it affects development. Mm. of the baby in the womb. Mm. But this is a very good example that has been given about how um, Jacob was able to get the healthy um, clock on his side. Mm. Something must have taught him that if you fix your eyes or you gaze constantly on something, Mm. The likelihood that it is going to have an imprint on conception is great. Mm. And he did it and it worked. Mm. A lot of people, I mean, in the scientific field will tell you that what, what happened to genes? I mean, the, the genes are the ones that will determine what the person will become. Yes, the genes have their parts to play. But I also believe that from this example, and from experience of what I have seen, what you concentrate on really has an effect on the conception that you have and the kind of baby that you're going to have. Of course, it's not going to change the baby's face for the, <laughs> the person to look like another, um, what do you call it, race. Mm. That's what we are talking about. But there, there, there seems to be some spiritual exchange there seems to be some something that takes place that we cannot explain. I don't think even science can explain how this takes place, but what you fix your eyes on. Mm. And I mean, when it comes to real examples, you real, we, I was saying that um, men who show love to their wives during pregnancy and really pamper them and cuddle them and, they tend, the women research is telling us that the women um, tend to have easier delivery, mm. easier labor and easier delivery. What is it? Is it, it, it? it affects the whole psychological makeup of the person. It affects everything of the, the person who is going through the conception and it has an effect on the, the baby. And the whole process of development. Mm -hmm. So um, it's important that when we are pregnant, we mind what we focus on. Mm. Some people are very bitter. I have, I have seen cases myself. My mother was a private practicing midwife and I have seen, before I even went into 
nursing myself. I have seen cases where women are about to deliver and they have had to call their husbands to come in for them to make certain confessions before they could have their baby. Mm. 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 I have seen cases where a woman will say that somebody did something to hurt me and I've held it well. I've, I've held it within me for a very long time. I don't know what is going to be the outcome of this delivery. So I just choose to forgive. And the moment they do that, they live, I mean, the, what do you call it? Labor goes on normally and then they deliver. Mm. So, I mean, this is telling me that the whole psyche of, uh, our whole psyche is, affected by the things that go on around us. So it is important that we concentrate on what is good. Paul said, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are of good report. And he, he lists all those things. If there is any virtue, think on peace. Mm -hmm. And the peace of God, which passes all under that, will fill your heart. You see, so it's, it's not just the psychological aspect of human beings as we are walking about and the peace we will have in our lives. But you are carrying another individual. The miracle of a baby, as Mama, um, uh, Mama Engman said, the beauty that God has placed in you. You are carrying it. You, I, I see myself when I'm pregnant, I see myself as um, a steward of something precious from God. Mm. So it is my responsibility to pay attention to what I do with myself. Some, there are certain things I would have loved to do, but in this pregnancy, because I'm not, I'm not taking care of myself alone and I'm accountable for the life that God has put in me, I need to be extra careful. Mm -hmm. We have some cases where people have been on drugs mm -hmm. that affected their children. Yeah. People have been they have been in abusive relationships where they are always fighting with their husbands, they are being beaten, they are being dragged on the ground and things like that. And they give birth to children who come out very insecure. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to what this, this whole thing about what we focus on, we have to pay attention. Mm -hmm. and there's a difference between fixation and focusing. Mm -hmm. In the fixation aspect, we are looking at that part of the de development that you automatically go through different mm -hmm. stages in development. And the F Freudian theory will tell you that there are some psychosexual things that uh, stages that you need to go through. Mm -hmm. And some people mm -hmm. get this fixated on one level yeah. like the oral yeah. level they stay there and they don't want to move on so you look at certain people and you say that they are they are uh, childish yeah because they seem to have kept themselves at that level and do not want to move on but when it comes to focusing mm. it's a choice mm. you make the choice of what you are going to focus on now whether it's fixation or is focusing the God who allowed the conception to take place mm -hmm. is the one in charge. Yes. So you tell him and then you ask for grace to be able to go through, to move on from one level to the other level. Mm -hmm. In the course of the pregnancy, there are different um, stages. Mm -hmm. There are times you, you feel, I mean, you don't get pregnant and that same day you start feeling the baby kicking. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> The baby has to develop to a certain level before you start feeling it. And even when they start kicking in the womb, we don't feel it at that time. Mm -mm. It takes another couple of weeks before we start feeling it. That's right. And right. all those developments, it's stage by stage. And at every stage, God is in charge. Mm -hmm. And that's why David mm -hmm. said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So every, the intricate things that God does at every stage, it's, it's, it's God's uh, prerogative. I mean, mm. he, he does it. It's his job. My 
part to play is to fix my eyes on him. Mm. Let me get fixated on Christ. Mm. And let me focus on Christ and say, God, you have put this life in me. Mm. I want mm. you to let me have this or that. You pray, or you pray into the life of your child. Mm. When Mama Kusia was talking about the man laying the hands on the woman and praying for her during pregnancy, I think that is something that every Christian man should make it his aim to do. Pray into the life of the baby, pray into your wife's life, and pray for the kind of delivery that the woman is going to have. It's very, very important because our God is a prayer answering God. And that's why the fact that he's, he, he, he knows what we need, he has told us that we should ask. So he said, he that to have you ask nothing in my name, ask. And it shall be given to you that your joy may be full. So we can ask, we can pray into the pregnancy. And you get a woman to fix our eyes. Pregnancy is the time that you should be reading the Bible. Mm. Yeah. And imbibing verses into your heart and telling God that this, you see, when when um, Hannah conceived someone, Hannah told Eli that this child is the one I played to God. Mm -hmm. You think that, you see, when we, 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 you read the story of someone, there was never a time that we saw a kind of, um, Eli's wife in the scene. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But this boy went there very young. I, I kept asking myself, how come that when God came and was looking for so someone to talk to and he was calling someone, someone, someone was sleeping in the church house. Mm -hmm. A small boy like that. Mm -hmm. Where was the mother figure in the home who could have been taking care of her? But then it shows, so for someone to have grown to be what he became, it shows what Hannah took her to, took him to, yeah. for mm -hmm. him to imbibe all those things. Mm -hmm. So it is our responsibility during our pregnancy and our delivery to focus on Christ. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bed also did the same thing. Moses was brought up in Pharaoh's house. But when they gave um, Moses to Jochebed to be the nurse to the baby, mm -hmm. all the Jewish things that Moses learned, he took it from his mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So during pregnancy and delivery and bringing up the baby, the conception, it doesn't end with just the seed taking place. It goes on because it is a nurturing process. That's right. And what we focus on is very, very important. I've you so much. Very in-depth, very in-depth. <laughs> Mama, Doris, I'm about to come to you. I see a question here. Um, she says that, uh, as a COVID, okay, let me let me read what he says. He says I, I have a question. When a man collapses in the labor room, is that considered abandonment of the wife? <laughs> I love COVID. Jeffy is uh, you know entrepreneur. He's the CEO of um, Express Laundry. My he, and he's saying Triangle Laundry Express. He's the CEO. He says. Uh, when a man collapses, is that considered abandonment? <laughs> but you know, Mama Doris, I'm just coming to you as well. We're looking at preservation, focus, attention, the impact on conception, even from the scripture. And Mama Abigail has just gone to such a great length to tell us what she thinks. If you want to add to it, please. Oh, okay. I I think I may have to skip Mama Doris for a minute. Mama Debbie, if you can wait in whilst. Um... Okay. Thank you very much, Mama Abigail. You really, like you said, what we see, what we focus on, what we watch do affect us. Mm -hmm. And even when you look at First Chronicles 4, 9, 10, mm -hmm. you find it is to do with Jabez. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible said Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, yet his mother named him Jabez because I gave birth to him in pain. Mm. 
Mm. Sometimes our pregnancies, sometimes we go through different kinds of issues. Mm. The pregnancies are not as smooth, even though the, the father will be there to give a helping hand or a support. There are some people who, when they are pregnant, even their own blood fights the pregnancy. I have experienced that. So I had to have a special injection mm. so that it will be able to stop my body from not destroying the pregnancies. Mm. You go through all kinds of different kinds of issues and all that. So mm. sometimes if a mother, knowing that even the father was there to support and all that, but knowing that that pregnancy was difficult, mm. you decide, no, nah, because I went through so much pain, let me name this child Jabez. Mm. Little do we realize. Sometimes some people name their children Abebrese and all those kind of names. Little do we realize that with that fixation and what we have put on that child, it allows the child to go through some form of suffering. Mm. Others saw this, but like Mama Abigail said, he recognized that there was a father. Mm. who can change the equation. Mm. Beloved, if you are going through certain problems, because some people will say, oh, when they were young, the amount used to curse them. You amount to nothing. You are useless. You are hopeless. You are this, you are this. And some of them believe that those things have followed them. But we should recognize that there is a father who put us in our mother's womb. Amen. The one who created us. Mm. As Jeremiah 1, 5, we read last time, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Hallelujah. Before you were born, I sanctified you, ordained mm. you a prophet to the nations. Mm. So let me go to him and he will change the equation for us. Mm. Amen. 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 Very powerful. God bless you so much. The God who changes, he rewrites the story, the narrative, the, maybe the statistics, but this God out there, somebody said the old man out there, however you call him. He rewrites the story. God bless you so much. Doris, fixation, focus, attention, the impact. Even looking at the book of Genesis 30, Moabigo has weighed in strongly. Mama Debbie has also added her voice. What do you have to say when it comes to conception, mommy? Please, you're muted. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let me give, when I completed all level, I went to work at mm. a, a place and then the, the manager's wife got pregnant and she used to come and sit with us anytime we were working. Then mm. one afternoon, she came in there and there was this tall man, I, I don't want to say, with fa some funny features. So he came and he was sitting just opposite the madam then, the manager's brother came and said, sorry, 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 no one who added my fear. The man got so furious. In fact, I didn't, I didn't, we didn't, we just laughed. And it's, but today as we were discussing, ah, so it is true. Mm -hmm. the, 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 you know, as a man thinks, so is he. <laughs> So, what you focus on is what will happen to you. Mama, Abigail is just laughing. <laughs> and this thing became a very big issue. They had to call all of us to be witnesses, and we couldn't keep <laughs> The most annoying part of the whole thing was that as we were pleading, then another man came and asked, What's going on? Then they narrated. <laughs> The story that he looked at the man and said, Ah, who's winning? Who's winning? <laughs> so, what we are saying is the mothers, irrespective, <laughs> sometimes people get raped and then people, uh, their, 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 their partners leave them. Sometimes people get pregnant and unfortunately their husbands die. Mm. But we want to use this medium to say that. The baby in the womb mm. is, if you read Psalm 139, 14, it said, I'll praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your words are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you. Mm. When I was made in the 
secret place. Mm. So each and every one of us was made at a particular place mm. by Adonai. Mm. So if you are going to all, your birth was not the prestigious one mm. and your mother told you, they say, this is what the word of God says. And it, it went on to say, when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven, so God wove us together in the depths of the earth. Mm -hmm. Said, your eyes saw my unformed body. Mm -hmm. All the days ordained for me were written in your books before one of them came to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is how God and woven. When you say you you are weaving, you take your time and you add one thread onto the other. Mm -hmm. So you are, you you are wonderful. You mm -hmm. are beautiful. So mothers, no matter what we are going through, sometimes when you get pregnant, sometimes you get husbands that when their wives are pregnant and they are, you know, some women will throw out and all those things. Some women cannot even come out of the bed and they are not very pleasant. They, they tend to leave them. If you are listening to us and you are going through that emotions we are saying that it is what you focus on that will determine the type of child that you bring into this world mm. when you I, I when we were in Legon, i got pregnant and um one lecturer said hey when your child will be very intelligent so they believe that as you learn and you, <laughs> you go to school their mm. iq will automatically go up mm. unfortunately when i gave birth to my my second born, one year into the pregnancy, I got pregnant again. Hey! And I didn't even know I was even pregnant. These six kids, I didn't even know I was pregnant. So one day, my husband took me to the hospital and the lady, I met a, a pretty doctor, very pretty. Then he said, my dear, can we have a pregnancy test? I said, doctor, please don't go there. He said, but the symptoms, I said, no, I can't be pregnant. I said, oh, you can so I allowed her, and it came out that I was pregnant. So I started crying. <laughs> I cried. <laughs> then listen to something. I cried. She, 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 she sat by me, comforted me. Then she said, Doris, calm down. You know, if you don't stop crying, you give birth to a baby that cries. Mm -hmm. Because everything that you fix your mind on will affect the baby. Mm -hmm. So please go home and enjoy this baby. Then she went on and said something I have never forgotten. Mm. She said, Doris, as I sit right now, I just want one child. I am a medical doctor. I've done all that it takes. So if God has given you the opportunity to get pregnant, even if you can give birth to 20, please, Give bed. I just wiped my face, stopped the crying, went outside, took some fufu and a punch and crack, crack. <laughs> just went back. What am I driving at? <laughs> Sometimes even married women, yeah. when they get pregnant, they start crying. Why are you crying? <laughs> Tell me, why are you crying? Are you at loggerheads with your husband? <laughs> so rejoice because God is needing something wonderful in the secret place within <laughs> us. It, we should say it as a blessing. Why well, have you cried before? Yes. If cried before. <laughs> no, I haven't cried before, but somebody, you know, mommy, I was laughing that somebody told Pastor and myself that they needed us urgently. <laughs> and we went and it was pregnancy. And the person was crying. But I didn't know what to say. <laughs> So you see, we cry as if we don't even want the babies. We don't want to welcome them into the world. Mm. It's as if they are not welcome. So the baby inside there feels that, oh, I've come to the wrong place. They don't even like me. Mm. Hey, cheer up. I remember when I was giving birth, everybody said, hey, people mocked at me. People said, oh, now when they see my kids, one day one person confessed, oh, mama goes here. Mm. Please don't cry when you get pregnant. What's it? The children, once God brings them into the system, He has a way of taking good care of them so that 
maybe your child will be a blessing to somebody somewhere. Mm. Please keep the baby. And if you are listening to us and you've gotten yourself pregnant and you are contemplating abortion, I beseech you by the message of God, mm. don't go and kill that baby. Mm. That baby has the right to live. Mm. You, wherever you are, when you give birth, go and give that baby to Aunt Abigail. She'll mm. take care of that baby. Don't ever <laughs> terminate the life. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, I thought you were gonna say they should bring it a baby to you. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not a grandmother yet. I'm not, I don't have the show. <laughs> she has it, then she can take care of it. So please don't go and abort any baby just because maybe you're giving birth enough and you think people will talk. Let them talk. Mm. You, because maybe that person is the next president of Ghana mm. or the first lady or the, 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 the doctor who is going to do research into COVID. So please allow the baby to come and God knows how to cater for the baby. And mm. those of us, when we get pregnant and we go through different, as for me, if I tell you, when I get pregnant, I have no problem. I will eat from day one. So the labor would and come out. I don't have that. But I know that other women go through the problem. And there are other women too, when they get pregnant, they don't have any issue. But it is when, after they've given birth, mm -hmm. yes, a lot of women, recently, I've got a lot of them. We pray for grace that mm -hmm. if God gives us the opportunity to get pregnant, he should give us grace mm -hmm. to sustain the pregnancy. Then after birth, you should give us strength to cater for them. But if you are pregnant, know what you fix your eyes on. Mm. Because whatever you think, whatever you, you imagine, whatever thing that you think of, they are the very things that will come to you. Be positive in your thinking. Mm. Be praying for the child mm. in your difficulty. Prophesy. Change the destiny of the child within you. Mm. And you have a child that will bring you joy and happiness. We are, we are ordained and our names are written in the book. So don't mm -hmm. kill any child. Allow them to come. God bless us all. Amen. 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 God amen. bless you too. God bless you too. First Lady Henriette, I'm about to come to you. Look into Jesus, who is the perfecter. He is the author and the perfecter of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. I'm looking at the, the, the notion of the shame. And even as we are looking at this day, Shane, as long as you were talking, I was thinking, there are some people that also, even as we are, society, condemnation and our behavior pushes people to want to, you know, take the babies. But thank you for speaking to the woman to say, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, don't take that life. God bless you so much more, Doris, especially in your edit, if you want to weigh in as well. Yes, you know, just to piggyback on what our mother said, you know, um, it's not a shame for you to be pregnant with a gift that God has given to you. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that the fruit of the womb is a reward. Mm -hmm. So you should count yourself blessed to be given such a beautiful reward. And you shouldn't be ashamed of it, but you should embrace it and know that there's a reason or there's a child in you who God is bringing into this world for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And so in saying that, you know, it is important for us to focus our at attention on things that are positive and not be distracted by things that are around us. Some of some, you know, especially, you know, young people, when we, we newlyweds who get married, their, their attention and their focus are things are on things that are honestly, they're not necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, some people spend time, oh, I wonder if my child is going to be light. I wonder if my child is going to be dark. I wonder, like things that are honestly are, you know, trivial. Mm -hmm. um, but we need to focus our, our attention on things that are necessary and things that are good. Understand that who the, chi the child in whom God has created in you, he was perfectly uniquely created and, and allow what God has said about that child to come to pass by allowing God's will in the life of the child to come to pass by not focusing on the things around us that are completely irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And so I would just encourage 
us all, you know, those who are with the fruit of the womb, that let us fix our eyes on what is necessary. Let us mm -hmm. fix our eyes on Christ and Christ alone. Let us surround ourselves with positive energy and positive circumstances and situations. Sometimes you, you know, unfortunately you can't, you can't determine where, you know, what challenges come your way, but allowing your, your mind and your heart to be focused on the fact that this is in fact a reward from God. It's a gift from God. And so even throughout the situations, as hard as it is, you know, keeping yourself as positive as possible. I know like, for example, uh, there was a lady who, when she was pregnant, she just always was so, you know, bitter. She had so many things going on and she was attesting that, you know, when she had her child, her child used to cry all the time. Mm -hmm. So as mothers, we have to understand that our children have a connection to us. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we feel our children can feel. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, if we, if we, we should feel allow peace and, and love and harmony to dwell within us so that it can also dwell within our children and not have an impact on them, on you as an individual, and also on the health of our babies. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. I see so many comments here. And, you know, talking about the, the man who collapsed, the, the, the chat room, people are trying to understand what that is. So <laughs> Mrs. Anapos just says, other uh, coming Jennifer, that's not abandonment cry because some people actually can stand the sight. So the answer is out there, he didn't abandon her. And then my dear husband says, May I ask why the man collapsed? Tell <laughs> that. Then somebody say, Yes, names, auntie rejoice, names really do have impact. You know, I, I've always said I've never seen somebody name their child Ananias till I was at the airport. And then I saw somebody's luggage bag and I saw Ananias. I'm like, maybe it's a different Ananias, but the spelling was exactly the Bible Ananias. I said, mm. And I think I've seen somebody named Judas once. So it's, it's interesting that even with the names, we are very mindful of it. Auntie Jennifer, I'm my gotcha. She said, Jesus. And then Dignas patients, uh, told gentleman, she said, that means he's not brave enough to see the miracle of childbirth. Such men become the best husbands ever when they wake up so when he collapses because he's not brave but when he comes back to life he's very respectful and so many people are laughing with Teresa the uncle that I've been first lady for Kenyans here she's just laughing my husband's laughing auntie Judith um Anson she says ha 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 auntie Beatrice Essendon as someone first lady she's also here laughing and then Elder Kobe Johnson says the man collapsed out of fear he wasn't brave enough according to him Men are not allowed in labor in his country. So that's a new experience too. And there's another question out there. Auntie Judy answer, she says, Women of God, please, I have a question. When what's your take of pregnant women posting their pictures on social media, especially among the young ones? We see them posting pictures of videos from when they take their pregnancy test to when they deliver. Can you please share what you think about that? So Oh, I was about to come to you on the figurative dimensions if you want to be uh, tackled that. First thing, you draw a very much as she says, hey, Mama Doris, you were very busy, pa. <laughs> <laughs> First thing, <lady> Dora, <laughs> please allow. <laughs> and my dear sister says, I knew it. I can relate. It reminds me of my face. My legs almost gave out. It's really not a funny experience, cry. <laughs> and then Auntie Jennifer said, Good for you, mommy. Auntie Rejoice is laughing. Thank you, Mama Kosi. I won't cry when next baby comes unexpectedly. <laughs> and then the coming just say, Your legs bad, honey. And uh, my dear husband said, Thank you, Mama Doris. Prophesy on your children. Declarations matter. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Fruits, Proverbs 18, 21. God bless you, dear. And mm -hmm. this is uh, Benedict of Rupert, she says, I cried and felt too old for having the fall child. <laughs> this one too looks just like me. And she's a beautiful princess as well. And Dickness Story Crab, uh, District Women's Leader, Regional uh, Secretary for Dallas District this year. God bless you, Texas District. God bless you all. And Mrs. Anita Bumaj, and she says, God bless you, Mama Kutia. I see also Auntie Priscilla Wilson of the New York is here. God bless you all. Mommy, so the question was, what 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 is your take about you know young people posting uh, new pictures and videos of their pregnancies, even as we're about to start to talk about 
you know, the figurative dimensions of conception, implementation of conceived ideas. Uh, mommy. Hmm. The, the, the world we are in now is very different from what we, we started with. Hmm. And um, Continue with. We, we, are, we are battling with looking at things in our own perspective and looking at things the way God wants us to look at. Yeah. When it comes to, I mean, I don't, I, I don't see why we should expose our private parts anyway mm. for other people to see our nakedness you see when when in the garden of eden adam had a perception into the fact that he was naked with his wife what did they do they went and cut leaves in an attempt to cover themselves why are certain parts of us Hidden mm. from other people. It's because of the sacredness of those parts and the privacy that God has given us. Mm. The Bible says that when they try to cover themselves with the leaves, God, in His wisdom and in His magnanimity, came in and said, "They have already committed the sin, but I'm not going to leave them like that." And He killed animals and gave the skin of the animal, which was more long-lasting. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve to cover themselves. Yeah. It tells us that the, our nudity is for us personally. Mm. And when it comes to knowing ourselves in sexual intimacy, it's when we share with each other. Mm. So, posting these nude pictures, I, maybe I belong to the old school. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm there because <laughs> uh, what do you gain out of it? Mm. And I, I keep asking, sometimes even the, the, the attack, the attack that certain younger people wear, it's so revealing. And what baffles me is that when they get into the crowd, then they start pulling the dress down. You use two yards to sew a dress, knowing that you should have used two and a half yards or three yards. <laughs> now, when you get to the crowd, you are pulling it. Where is the extra length going to come from? <laughs> the person I keep asking them, where is it going to come from? Because you knew this is what you wanted. And you, so you exposed certain parts of you. Why is it that all of a sudden you want to pull it down and cover yourself? It tells you that inherently in you, you can tell yourself that what is going on is not right. Mm. So I think that um, this posting of nude pictures, we, we, those of us who are Christian, we didn't learn Christ to. That is not how we learned Christ. And posting the nude picture, what does it do for you? When we are talking about fixing your eyes on things that are good, whatsoever things are good or good reports, what, what goodness do you get from the nude picture that you are posting? And these days I've seen pregnancy pictures. When they take, they go through the, in my days, when you got pregnant, you wore flowing dresses. Mm -hmm. So that you would hide your tummy. Mm -hmm. Now you wear skin tight dresses and then you are showing the protruding tummy. Fine. If you want to show the world the protruding tummy, that's okay. But your nudity, please, I think that's one of a special part of you that we should keep to ourselves and glorify God. Everything that we are doing, we have to ask ourselves does it glorify God? Mm. What do we gain out of it? So the, 
they have all kinds of excuses that they give when I ask questions about it. Um, and right now we have come to a point where it's so difficult to um, get people to understand the difference between it's my life and I'm God's child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, when you are God's child, you take directions from God and you do what your father tells you and you get his blessing. If it's your world and it's yourself, then you are saying that you are in charge of yourself and you do whatever pleases you. And most of the time when you ask, are you doing something that pleases you or you are doing it to please others so that they will say that you are in fashion with them. Mm. We need to ask ourselves all these questions and ask, find out, are these things going to be helpful to us? So the posting of the nude pictures for Christian children, for Christians who are in serious business with Christ, I don't think that that is the way for us to do. Okay. It is not the right thing for us to do because it does not glorify God. Let us keep those private parts that God has given us in the in Anna. Hmm. Anna. Because even Paul talked about it and said that the, the, there are certain parts of the body that are kept in Anna. Hmm. You see, they are kept in Anna. And right. why are we keeping them in Anna? Because of the sacredness of that. Hmm. If all of us go about walking about naked, how will we feel? Hmm. And what will it do? What, how will it help? Besides, mm. so we have to think about all those things and honor ourselves, keep ourselves honorable before God, and then get the blessings out of it. So that is the take I would give on that. God bless you, ma'am. First thing, Henry, I wanted to come to you because you're also part of the younger generation. You know, you see, <laughs> I think your mommy said that she belongs to the other side and she likes to be there. Uh, you see, you know, this fashion poses where the, you know, the, sometimes you see some oil on there, you know, to bring the shape out and stuff like that. And, you know, it's fashion. I want to hear what you also think. Mommy, God bless you for telling us what the Bible is saying. First Lady Henrietta, fashion, modernity, contemporary nature. Is it a contemporary thing to do those, you know, poses for pregnancy photo shoot? For me, I see it more so as, you know, society and social media having an influence on what we do mm -hmm. as believers, instead of us having an influence on those who may be in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, um, personally, I don't think it's necessary for us to expose ourselves in that nature. Um, I strongly believe that, you know, pregnancy and enjoying that pregnancy it's a beautiful thing we always you know we've said it is a beautiful thing but it's something that you know you and your husband should enjoy together and I think a lot of times we want to give up a perception to the world and it's not necessary you know we're not in competition with anyone um you know some people get to the extent the, the extreme and the extent that they go to for their pregnancy photos it's ridiculous it's not necessary like who are we trying to impress Mm. Um, and even to the extent, like, and I think in the question, the person was like, to the point where, you know, some people get pregnant, even if they're two weeks pregnant, they're posting the pregnancy test on social media saying I'm pregnant. And it's like, you know, where's the privacy? Like, mm. let us, you know, share private moments with our spouses and allow us to, you know, even get our, you know, our minds and our bodies and everything prepared for the work that is ahead of us. You know, mm. pregnancy is a beautiful thing, but it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And if we're walking into it, I'm um, thinking that it's just always, oh, it's, it's just here to, you know, I'm just, you know, we're going to be taking pictures every week and I'm going to be posting every status. I mean, it makes me believe that our attention is refocused on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And so back to what I was saying in the beginning, it's just social media and society influencing us. But as children of God, we shouldn't allow those things to influence us. Mm -hmm. It's important for us to keep things private. For me personally, I don't even think I told anyone I was pregnant until I was actually showing 
um, because that was just my personal decision. And that was where I was comfortable in doing. And so I just think that we need to, you know, allow our some things in our marriages to be private. You know, some people, even to the extent where they're, you know, kissing their husbands and doing all this on social media, like it's not, it's not necessary. Keep those things private. Um, and don't allow the things in the, uh, that we see to influence what we do as children of God. Because at the end of the day, we are children of God and we, we are supposed to be the um, example setter. So let us set positive examples and let us not fall into what uh, examples that, you know, things of the world or people of the world have set for us. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I think that we, we are good with that. I'm gonna come to that, um, the idea. So we said that concepts are more figurative and also they are, you know, literal. There's a symbolic dimension. And so I'm just gonna to come to you, Mama Doris. We are looking at the, this idea of uh, something that is conceived. How should we do it? We have so many examples in the Bible of, you know, stories of either David or even um, Esther. So I'm looking at the implementation of the conceived idea, Mama Doris, if you wanna weigh in. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity. And about this photo and print, let me say some, right? You can a man can be the only one who be crying. Have you? <laughs> have you? I, 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 I love the royal family, the British royal family. Mm. No, I love them. I just love. I don't know why, but I, I like following them. Mm. And so, um, William's uh, wife got pregnant. The only time we saw her with the baby was when she had given birth and they came out of the hospital and showed that their baby. Mm. We never saw them with photo shoots of uh, So you see, when we look at those people in that class, they don't do such things. Mm. And we are Christians. So even them on this planet Earth, they see themselves as royals. They don't do certain things. So we should do better for mm. the world to copy us. So mm. if you're a Christian, it's not everything that you have to do. You don't have to expose the temple of God if you've forgotten. It is the temple of God. And even in the temple of God, if you go to the Old Testament, there were places that mm -hmm. only the priests should mm -hmm. come to go. Mm -hmm. So you're in that part where God wants you to cover are places where people should not see. He wanted us to see the head. That's why the head is there. But we cover our stomach. Mm -hmm. So please. If you are pregnant, cover your stomach and God will bless you. Amen. Amen. So we are talking about Amen. the implementation of the conceived idea. Mm. And, you know, we, 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 the Bible says that uh, it is God who gives us those ideas. Mm -hmm. It's part of the uh, um, gift from the Holy Spirit that we can get. That's we can right. drop, we can get it from uh, somebody or whichever way mm. that you get it. You need wisdom to implement it. Amen. And thanks be to God. Yeah, thanks be to God. He says that as for wisdom, he gives freely. Mm. Apart from salvation, the, another thing that God gives freely is wisdom. Say, so if you lack it, ask and I'll give it to you freely. So if you want to implement any of the ideas that comes to you, prayerfully go to God, the source of it, Maybe you can get it, um, the whole thing, the whole concept, but you may not even know how to implement it or the way through. When you go, he will give you the wisdom and the guidance that you can do to implement it. And I, I want to talk, um, you, you need wisdom in doing some of these things. When you hear something and you want to talk about it, you need wisdom. And my favorite mother in the Bible is Abigail. When you read 1 Samuel 25, mm -hmm. Abigail did a good job. He, she did a good job on David. If you read that literature, you will love it. If I ever become the minister for education, I will use that verse for literature. That people <laughs> <laughs> oh, vote, vote for me so that I'll come to everything. Yes, read, take your time, and look at the amount of wisdom that 
Mama Abigail used to cool down the temper of this great warrior. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think David married Abigail. Mm -hmm. Because after she had done that, the wisdom with which she spoke to the heart of that great man, mm -hmm. this man said, no, I need this woman in my court. Mm -hmm. So if you are listening to us and you've gotten any, uh, uh, you have any, you've conceived any idea, all that we want to say is that you need wisdom to implement it. As we, 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 we prophet Nathan, prophet Nathan, God had spoken to him about David and David had done something evil in the sight of God. God was so much annoyed with David. He didn't kill Saint Nathan. And I like the way the prophets acted. Mm. Now people have this gift of prophecy in the church. And they say that the, as for Church of Pentecost, they don't allow me to use my, my giftings. My dear, we will allow you to use your giftings by pray for wisdom and the way you discharge your duties. Amen. Because if we don't use, sometimes you dream, you see visions, and the way you say it yeah. brings chaos. It brings separation. It brings pain. But mm -hmm. you need wisdom. Mm. to guide such, such gifts. If you don't have that wisdom and you think you can say anything at all because you've received it from God, then you will not be allowed. So I pray that we will do that. Look at the way Nathan handled King David, mm -hmm. that great man, that warrior who has fought since his infancy. But when the man took him through, then he said that, oh no, I have, but if he had gone there to insult him and say things the, the way sometimes we say things he wouldn't have even accepted his fault no he would have said something else and the second thing that we want to talk about is the holy spirit he is the engineer of all these conceived ideas mm -hmm. that is just one thing he said to lead us into all truth so if you have any any sometimes you get um an idea and it's like you don't even know the way around it becomes so difficult. What mm. should I do? Should I do it this way? Should I turn it around? Should I, should I go to the Holy Spirit? Mm. The Holy Spirit will just drop the answers and adhere to him when he's prompting you. Don't be difficult. Maybe he will say it in a different way, not the way you think. Mm. But once he is the orchestrator, he knows where you have to move to get to where he wants you. Sometimes you become so disobedient, so you just say, no, no, I just, I don't want, I want to do this. So it becomes difficult. So mm -hmm. as much as the, the idea that you've conceived is so good because you don't listen to the promptings and the leadings of the Holy Spirit, it, you, you cannot come out of it or bring it into fruition. Then the final one is you have to have faith, courage, and boldness. Mm -hmm. Certain things you need the boldness of God to do it. Mm -hmm. Because the thing may be so scary. And even in our culture, if you're a woman and you want to push forward, you have an idea and you want to push forward, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. But once you've heard it from God, mm -hmm. once you've heard it from God, you've prayed about it, the Holy Spirit has given you the leading. Then you need faith and the boldness to do it. Mm. Standing all the comments, the negative comments that will come, people will try to bring you down. People will say all negative things about it. But if you rely on the Holy Spirit, believe you me, the end will be glorious. Mm -hmm. I've been through all those stages before where people said so many things about me. And I remember one day I went to my husband and said, so what? What you one kasa kasa again again and within myself I knew that I wanted to do so go and do it and I did it. So there are people who pass comments, negative comments, say also all those things, but you need the boldness that Christ had that He went to the cross, and now we are enjoying salvation. Mm. It wasn't easy, but the end will be glorious. So we pray that God will give us all that we need: the wisdom, the Holy Spirit, the faith, and the courage, and the boldness to implement everything that we have conceived. And the last one that I always tell people, talk to the right people. Mm. People have done it. People have been through what you are, you are now starting. So read books, read, mm. read, read, read. 
read as much as you can. And it will shock you that everybody started from a point. They had their own hinges, they overcame it, and now they've, they've become successful. So you too, you will start to have your hinges, you overcome it, and you have a successful story. So talk to the right people, get a mentor to coach you through, and at the end of it, or once it is from God, the end will be glorious. Amen. Amen. The end will be glorious. Mama Debbie, if you can weigh in as well. God bless you, Mama Doris. Thank you so very much, our mummies. Yeah, and um, with if an idea is conceived, God drops an idea in your spirit. I think the best thing to start off with is to write it down. Mm. Write it down. When you write it down, it makes it a whole lot easier. You write it down and then you take it to God in prayer. Mm. Just like Jehoshaphat who received the letter of destruction, mm. he took the letter before God in prayer. See, when it's written down, it makes it a lot easier for you to be able to, you know, follow it through and focus as God guides you. Uh, and like our mommies had said, you know, mm -hmm. looking at uh, an idea that came to Rahab. Mm -hmm. Rahab, somebody who wasn't even a Christian in Joshua chapter 2. But the Lord dropped the idea in his spirit that quickly, if you want to save your family, do something. And this woman quickly went in. Sometimes our delays, we delay. Mm. We have the idea, I'll do it today, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it today, I'll do it tomorrow. Mm. And because of that, sometimes sometimes it is within a span that God wants you to do what mm. you want to do. I remember our former chairman in to me made that statement that the message, if you send it too late, it will be useless. Mm. Meanwhile, God has put that message on your heart to go and share mm. but maybe by the time you said oh i'll do it today tomorrow before you know it that person may have passed mm. so the urgency of the of, of of the situation is also very necessary so rahab capitalized on that urgency and because of that a family was saved and then look at what happened she became the grandmother the grandmother of david you know, can you imagine that? Mm. And, and then the, uh, in that line, Christ came in. Mm. A harlot. This mm. is how our God works. Mm. All because an idea dropped in her spirit from the Lord and she quickly took action. Mm. So we are praying that may God grant us, like our mom said, we need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We need faith and courage like the daughters of Zelophehad who even though that issue had not been dealt with before. And you see, the secret for those sisters is that they came together as one. Mm. How many times are we always divided <laughs> when we are supposed to come together as one so that a goal Mercy. will be? Mercy. Somebody wants preeminence. Mm. And because of that, they will destroy the whole plan. Mm. But because they came together as one, even God said, listen to what they are saying. Mm. And they got what they wanted. So may God help us, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mama, Mama uh, Debbie, God bless you. Mama Abigail, when Mama Debbie was speaking, it looked like there was something you had to say. So I'm in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that it may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak. And it will not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. God bless you, Mama Debbie. Mama Abigail, I could just sense that you had something to say. What I wanted to say is exactly what you have just read. Mm. Because it, it just came to me. Because you see, the writing down mm. ideas mm. is very, very important. I keep a notebook by my bedside. <laughs> you are like my mom then. <laughs> and I'm sure when you check in with her, you will realize that a lot of the things that you do, that, you see, sometimes it's in the middle of the night, I wake up, an idea comes into my mind. Mm. And I'm feeling sleepy. I scribble it onto the notepad and then I sleep. When I wake up and I'm trying to remember it, I can't remember. I go back to the notepad, I read it, and then it is there. Mm. God speaks to 
us in different ways. Mm. But for us to concretize it, you need to put it down. Mm. They said the weakest pen, mm. the weakest pen is stronger than the best memory. Mm. Mm. You will forget. But when you put the ideas down and you work with them, it's, it always works better. Um, I mean, I, le- I read a lot of things about how things are going on. In Africa, I think one of our challenges is that we don't do a lot of research mm. to substantiate, substantiate the things that are going on around us. Mm-hmm. So I, I love reading research issues to find out more what people who have been able to do some research find. And one of the things I came across was that those who put down their ideas mm. are usually able to accomplish more than 80% of the ideas than those who do not put them down. Mm. And another thing I read too was that every day, more than a thousand things are open to us that can make us succeed very well in our life mm. but we don't pay attention to them nice. and the reason why we don't pay attention to them is that we don't make them mm. so a lot of us are working on ideas that will catapult us to areas that God has planned for us mm. we are not even paying attention and that is something that we need to look at Amen. as children of God we, 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 we have the privilege if you go into the history of a lot of the inventions you realize that they were invented by Christians mm-hmm. God gave them ideas look the, the, uh, the person who found the so many uses of peanuts in yeah. the US was a Christian. Hmm. And when he was called to Congress to explain why, how he got all those things, he said, it's in the Bible. Hmm. If we are going to pay attention to what God is telling us, because he, he has promised us that if we really look up to him, he will reveal to us things that we haven't even thought about. He's the one who gives wisdom. He's the one who gives understanding. And he's the one who gives clarification on things that need to be done. I personally do not understand why Christian children should not be able to be doing better than their non-Christian counterparts. What is it that they are doing that we are not doing? When we have a father who has promised to give us the wisdom, if only we ask for it. So I think that is something that we really need to pay attention to. But on all these things, the ideas that God gives us, that we conceive, Hmm. we have to be very careful about them. When Joseph made his dream known Hmm. to his brother, Hmm. and even his father, he was speaking to the wrong congregation. Hmm. Hmm. There are some dream killers. Hmm. There are some idea killers. And we need, when you ask for wisdom, ask for discernment in addition. Because we need to discern and know who we can share ideas with and those we should just leave alone. Hmm. A lot of us make, we we leak out information when we are not supposed to. And then we get dream stealers, dream killers, Mm -hmm. and dream destroyers. Mm -hmm. All these people come together, and then what it says that God has planned for you, you start looking at the storms around you, and you start listening to them, and then you drop them. Mm -hmm. It is very, very important that we ask for discernment. Mm -hmm. There, there There are certain things that 
I, I think I have mentioned it on this platform before. I don't believe in casting your pearls before the swine. Mm. Mm. The ideas that God gives you, they are pearls. Mm. They are precious gifts. So when he, he gives them to you to conceive and act upon them, mm -hmm. you ask him for them, you ask him for wisdom, you ask him for discernment, and then you go accordingly. Mm. Then we have idea promoters. Mm. There are some people who will come into your life and will always encourage you to move on. Ask God to place those people in your life. Amen. You see, me, I, <laughs> the thing about prayer is that be literal about it. God, I need someone to help me in this area. Amen. Bring the right people. Mm. into my life mm. and you will be surprised at how quickly god will you start all of a sudden people come your way and you feel this one i can share the issue or you listen to something they are saying and immediately it dawns on you that this is somebody that i can share my vision with and mm. who would be mm -hmm. to help me we just as we should shun idea killers idea destroyers and idea scatterers so should we embrace idea promoters? Let us be on the lookout for them. And please let us be idea promoters ourselves. Amen. You see, the, the youth are crying for us to support them to do things. Just last week, I got a message about one youth who was so devastated because he went to church, the elder saw him. The first thing he asked was, ah, what is wrong with you? Why are you looking the way you are looking? Mm. And the gentleman was like, hmm. So he turned to his friend and that, this was said in front of other people. So mm -hmm. he turned to his friend and said, is there anything wrong with me? What happened to the, the elder calling to the, the gentleman to the side and say, ah, I don't like the way you were looking for this reason or that reason. Is there anything mm -hmm. going on? How can I help you? Mm -hmm. What is wrong with how can I help you? Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things that we should be doing. Please, the, the youth, some of them are hungry for advice. They are mm -hmm. hungry for encouragement. They are hungry for people to hold their hands and lead them on. Please let us be idea promoters, mm -hmm. encouragers, and supporters. Mm -hmm. The last thing I'll say about it is let us learn to hold meetings with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Hold a meeting with yourself at least once a week. Mm -hmm. When you have put down all these ideas that God has dropped into your mind, and he wants you to conceive them and bring them about. Find a quiet place. Sit down. Go through all those ideas that you went through, you got to that week, and ask God, what do you want me to do? Mm. How do I know? What steps should I take? And meet with yourself. Look at yourself. What have I got to be able to do these things? Most of the time, we don't think. Hmm. And when I say, people say I'm insulting them. I'm not insulting. You see, we, we, we don't think and we talk. Look at the way it, it lands us. Hmm. So when we don't think and we do things, because Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Just last week, one lady came to complain to me about a woman she was taking care of mm. a woman, an old woman, she's taking care of, and something small happened. And this woman decided to narrate everything about this girl bringing her down. And then, after she had said what she shouldn't have said, and people had come in, she said, Oh, consider that I'm an old woman. And I was, when I heard that, I was like, the more reason why you should have known better. Mm. Mm. What is the 
younger generation doing for the younger generation? Hmm. Are we encouraging them? Are we bringing them up? So when you meet with yourself, hmm. you ask yourself, what is going on in me? Hmm. Have I finished? Have I accomplished everything that God wanted me to do this week? The ideas that he put into me, what have I done with them? What can I do? Who can help me? Who can I empower to do more? Who should I delegate certain things to? Who should I be supervising to be doing some of these things? God doesn't just drop the ideas into our minds for nothing. Mm. Mm. Should we just labor and not bring to birth? Mm -mm. Mm. Mm. Just as when we conceive biologically, we look forward at the end of the nine months to deliver and give birth to a baby. So should we deliver the ideas that God has put in us. So mm. when he comes, we conceive it, when he puts the ideas in our hearts, please, it is our responsibility to work on them. Otherwise, it is just like a woman who gets pregnant and never delivers the baby. Mm. That is not God's plan for us. Mm. Whatever he puts in our minds, he expects us to work with it. Mm. May God help us Amen. so that we see all the concepts, the seeds of conception that he has put in us and start working towards them. If we are doing that, we will we'll be too busy minding our own business that we will not have time to be gossiping and telling stories and doing things that we are not supposed to be doing. We will be going about the business of our Father. May God help us all. Amen. 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 Uh, you know, the, 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 thank you so much, Mama Abigail. There are some things that I wrote down that I just need to go back into, and I'm thinking that it calls for other dimensions to be discussed. But Mommy, when you were talking about idea promoters, idea killers, I quite remember I was sharing something that as a young person in Ghana, somebody ever approached me with an idea and I, something that they wanted me to be a part of. And I just happened to have discussed it with, with an elderly person, you know, that I thought was in that field. And the person says, look, you are young, you are single, you are not married. And, and by the time I realized they, they talked me out of it. They talked me out of it because they used my age and they, they, they said I was a, a single girl in a field that in itself was challenging. And so if I got myself involved in something of this nature, it's a long story short, they got me out of the idea. Years later, I could look back and say, wow, that was not a right counsel that I received. So thank you so much, Mommy, for letting us know. We pray, but we need also discernment just to know that they are idea killers they are discouragers out there. They see the potential, all right, but the agenda is not to help you. God bless you so much for letting us know that that is the reality. And sadly, even in the kingdom, these things are all around us. Mercy is all I can say. Mercy is all I can say. God bless you so much, mommy. First lady Harriet, I'm just about to come to you as well. I see so many comments in here. I'm just going to take them and I want to hear what you also think. Give it us a also about to get ready to wrap up. God bless you so much. I just, it sent me into a reflective mode and I hope all those who are listening, you are just taking a cue. You know one thing in the Bible, Mary, Bible says when she heard all those things, she pondered it in her heart. And Daniel himself said he saw something that was very, very, you know, something that he didn't like, he pondered in his heart. And when you were talking about the idea, I was thinking about what the Bible said about the account of Ruth that one day, you know, uh, in the book of Ruth chapter two, one day she had the idea and she told her mother-in-law, I want to go and glean. And the Bible says she found herself in the field of Boaz. So I was thinking, mommy, what, when you were speaking that, that was ultimately what God wanted to do. But the idea had to come from her first for her to say, this is what I want to do. God bless you so much. It is a point of reflection for all of us. God bless you. And I see so many comments here. We appreciate you for always being here with us and being so active. The prof is here. All the folks are coming kids here. <laughs> and I see him all over the place. So my husband says, the one word description of this 21st century behavior is post-modernity. Paul wrote, 
I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. First Corinthians 10, 23, he was waiting on the, you know, nudity uh, post and all that. And this is the Nakushis of Russia says, right, Frederina, the competition and social media control freaks. Lord have mercy on us and guide us to focus on the right things and also the right path. God bless you, Mrs. And dearest husband says, good, great contribution, Frederina. Social media influence has a lot to do with it. I shouldn't know God who should set the tone on social media. And Auntie Julie, she says, we really enjoyed today's woman today. God bless you so much. We appreciate the prophet in the house, Elder Professor Sergeant Kwanengeti. <laughs> he says, thank you, Mama Kasi. When I was growing, the term private was expensive and noble, while public was considered low class. For instance, private car, private school, private jet, private luxury. I'm sure so many people don't even know luxury. <laughs> if you say luxury, they don't get it. Luxury. <laughs> but he says, but public school, tetabas, trotro. Which of these do you prefer? Why is it that current generation like putting everything in the public domain? Please be more private. Private is expensive. Sounds like a commercial. I could say this is today's woman, but we approve this message. <laughs> and I'm not going to be there if says, Professor has spoken. And the prophet's back again. He said, read books, read books. Thank you, Mama Doris. He says, write it down. Thanks, Mama. Even to the prophet, the angel said, write it down. We forget things. So God wants us to write them down. And my husband says, thanks, Mama Abby. You couldn't have said it any better concerning the needs of the youth. Issues like what you just described widens the gap between them and us. May the Lord have mercy. And he says, very deep, Mama Abby. Just a note of caution to all pregnant with godly ideas to be mindful of all the negative people around us, lest you miscarry that idea. May God help us. You are right, honey. You are right. Auntie Jennifer Amagelch is here. She says, God bless you all for a wonderful discussion. The time is crying foul, but we've had a very fabulous time. Right there, you know, you know, weigh in on every dimension and give us your closing as well. It's been beautiful. It's been wonderful. I'm leaving with a meeting to myself. Please go for it. God bless you. I think so fun, or Mommy Abigail said so much and mm. it's so true. Um, and I believe as individuals, we have to take um, what our mother has given to us and we have to put it in our lives. I've taken so many notes. I'm sitting up here writing as fast as I possibly can. God bless you, mm -hmm. Mommy Abigail. But one thing I want to leave is something that was spoken by Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. It says, whatever the mind of man can conceive and uh, believe, um, it can surely achieve. And I want to add by setting your eyes on the source of That's that. Right. So as children of God, let us set our eyes on Christ, mm -hmm. who is the source of our ideas that have been given unto us. And as we have conceived it, as we've written it down, as we have prayed on it, allowing the Holy Spirit to take control and allowing wisdom to be executed in our lives and in our steps and in our moves the Lord himself will allow whatever he has given unto us to come to pass to his glory. So may God bless us all. Amen. 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 Very powerful quote. Very, very powerful. God bless you so much. Mama Devi, please will take your closing as well. Okay. Thank you so very much as well. I have really been blessed once again. And I also took quite a few notes. Mama Abby, God bless you. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so um, like we said, um, conception comes from God, mm. both with the physical mm. as well as with ideas. And it takes for us to go to him who gave us those ideas so that we can seek wisdom from him. We can seek discernment from him 
and we can seek understanding, even the steps of to how to apply what we have been given mm. so that there won't be any abortion, mm. both physical as well as with the ideology, the ideas God has given unto us. Mm. Because honestly, as we look back, we see many people have caused us to abort certain ideas. Oh, oh, Dream oh. killers mm. have destroyed many dreams. Mm. But right now, with the knowledge we have, Amen. we are more armed. And like we said, we will jot things down. We'll seek the Lord in prayer and he will guide us mm. and we will deliver. Amen. God will bless us and we will deliver to the glory of his name. Amen. 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 God bless you so much more, Debbie. I see. Uh, he said, <laughs> Mama Abby, God bless you. This is Elder Professor Vamika here. Dear host, put the statement, when you pray for wisdom, ask for the spirit of discernment in slow motion. Mm -hmm. Most people share their ideas with people with titles instead of using discernment. The angel told Cornelius, send for Peter. Go to the right people through discernment. God bless you so much. I'll try to put it in slow motion. And Auntie Rejoice says, God bless you all. Our mothers, happy Mother's Day in advance. God bless you, God bless you. Momo Doris, I think I have lost her a bit. I will take your clothes then, Mama um, Abigail. Me or Doris? Um, I think she's a little bit offline. So, uh, Mama Abigail, if you can take your clothes, please. Oh, okay. All right. Exodus chapter 23, verse 26. Hmm. No woman in your land will miscarry. Amen. Or be barren. Hmm. I will fulfill the number of your deeds. Hmm. No woman in your land will miscarry or be barren. Mm. Looking at everything that we have discussed this evening, we have come to the conclusion that the whole idea of conception is not limited to biological conception. Mm -mm. And here is God saying that no woman in your land will miscarry or be barren. Mm. It's, we know from everything that is the woman who carried the babies and delivered the babies. Mm. Now, if God is saying in his word, and he stands by his word to perform it, that we will not be, we will not miscarry or be barren, then we have to take it literally. Mm. It means that all those ideas that we even conceive, they will not be miscarried. Amen. And we will not be barren. At the end of life, we will be productive people mm. who have birthed great ideas. Mm. So that is what I want to leave with all of us. I like to challenge God a lot. Have you not said in your word that if this is what you have said, then this idea that I'm thinking about, if it is from you, direct me in the right path. Mm -hmm. And yeah. let me go on to deliver as you have asked me. For anybody who is expecting the, the fruit of the womb and it has not come, the same verse is what you can stand for. And when we ask for God to give us everything, he has said in his way that he will give us. Mm -hmm. I always use the leaders of the Church of Pentecost as my example. Mm -hmm. Reverend James McKeon and his wife did not have any biological children. Look at us now. I'm sure the day that the trumpet will sound and we will all meet in heaven, you will look on and say that, look at how many people are there. Mm. Wow. And 
these people invest us because they did not allow any limitation in his life to define him. Please, whatever it is that we are going through, God has said that we will not miscarry, we will not be barren. Amen. Let us hold on to that and God will let it come to pass. Amen. 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 Very powerful. The book of Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. There is a time. It says to everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck what is planted. It goes on and on and on, and it says a time for peace at the conclusion. So when in your life, your time to conceive is up, just as our mommy said, we pray for the grace to manage that seed and for the goodness of God to present us with all the encouragers that help us for the fruitful delivery of the seed conceived. Our mommy said there will be no miscarriage, and that is our faith. And that is our belief. All the great idea promoters, idea encourages an idea. The dream helpers, God bless you. As for the killers, may God cause them to be far away from our tent. In Jesus' name, amen. So I see um, Nanette Sirboy. So thank you so much, our beautiful mothers, for this wonderful knowledge field session today. God bless you all. God bless you too. In the process, hey, abortion of ideas, chai, mama, thank you. Beware all abortion doctors of ideas. God is watching over you, the client. Keep your eyes and weakness. I tape the God which you bless your immensely, our wonderful mothers. And I see Jennifer Makache once again. Thank you and happy Mother's Day to you all. So as we have announced, we have uh, Auntie Anita, Dickness Anita Johnson of Johnson Flavor. Dikna Saraba for MTTA Fashions in Oklahoma City, and also Alga Kobe Jemfi of Triangle Laundry Express in Raleigh. They're going to partner with us. So those of you who are about to send us the video for the Mother's Day challenges, the winners are going to get items from these businesses for your, you know, for for the winners. So I'm here and I'm like, look, let the videos come 60 minutes. A uh, 60 seconds video telling us what is so special about the mothers in your life. And God willing, next week, God willing, next Monday, we're about to announce the winners and MTT of Fashion, Johnson Flavor, and also Triangle Laundry Express will send you items from their businesses. Thank you all so much. Mama Abigail, please, if you would pray with us. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, once again, we are grateful to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the things that you have taught us today. Thank you for the ideas that you put in us, that you have planned to carry through. We are praying that from today on, Lord, we will all be better. Mm. And Lord, look up to you. So that as we put the ideas into our mind, we go to conception with you and deliver according to your word. We are praying for all women who are looking for the fruit of the womb and are having issues. Holy Spirit, come into their situation. And Lord, bless your children with the children that you have created for them. Mm. We are praying that even if it should happen that they do not have biological children. Lord, you will give them spiritual children no. who will come up in you and give glory and honor to you. We are praying that as you have said in your word in Exodus, mm. that none of us will be discouraged and none of us will be buried, but we will grow in you. And Lord, we will become the idea conceivers and we will also be the idea deliverers mm. who will give glory and honor to your name. If there's anybody who is going through issues, anything that you have, you have put into his or her mind to conceive, 
Holy Spirit, come and clarify issues for your children. Mm. And let us bear the that you want us to bear. We ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. And even as we are praying, Lord, we commit our mama Egypt and her son into your, into yeah. your care. Mm. And Lord, you continue to protect them, wipe their tears, and Lord, give them good ideas that they will conceive and be joyful in you, even in the midst of the pain that they are going through. Help them and bless them. And bless anybody who is believed and who is going through some sadness of one type or the other. Mm -hmm. Lord, help us and help us. We ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. We have it. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much, Professor Henrietta. God bless you. Mama Doris, God bless you so much. Mama Debbie, God bless you. Mama Abigail, God bless you. All this summer, thank you. God bless you. All of you who are with us today, God bless you. We want to wish a special, special happy Mother's Day in advance to all mothers. And I want to take this opportunity to tell my dearest mother, Ignace Margaret Azon, mm, I love you, mommy. Kudos to you. I dope my heart to you. You are the best. Everybody's mom is the best. And mine is the best of the best. <laughs> Please. <laughs> You, the one time we are allowed to be very subjective is when we talk about mothers. I've said my piece. God bless you all, mommies. Have a great time. And see you, God willing, next week. Love you all. Bye. Bye-bye. God bless you. God bless you too. And happy Mother's Day in advance. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. Bye. Bye.